did an engineering course. So in the engineering course, we were we had to have at least one or two semester of C++. So that's basically, but I think I read those bas basically to pass. And then when, actually earlier, when I finished high school, there was this course that was happening in Strathmore. It was called I Miss. <laughs> so I did that for, I think, one and a half years. And I was doing .NET technologies then. So that one, which was, it was very easy to do actually, and then C++ in, in campus. So it's basically going to a lecture hall and getting taught. But that was, so I wasn't, at that point I wasn't looking at myself as a programmer, I was just thinking, how can I get to become a chemical engineer? I would say I'm a self-taught programmer mostly, but um, initially it started with some guidance from professors and the sort in school. But um, later on, just the interest in different projects, it forces you to go ahead and learn it on your own. So things like PHP, JavaScript, all that was on my own, and Udacity, that sort of thing. Uh, that was mid-2009. Um, I had a friend that was living um, in the next building. So he gained admission into an institute back home called NIT. Then he came home and he was talking about how it's an environment different from the university, everybody's used to. Because of then we were all looking for admission into the university. And it's like, okay, it's a different thing. It's computer programming done the right way, the teacher had to program and all of that. So initially I was not really passionate about it because I, I was aspiring to become a civil engineer. But when I started understanding what computing is all about, what my first line of code, so there's this feeling of you being able to create something out of nothing. This ability to solve problems with just code writing. I first came into contact with programming uh, in Form 2 or 3, can't really remember. Um, but there's this really cool teacher who uh, wrote, I think, C++. Uh, and I could see him write random things on the laptop, and I was really fascinated. Um, so I asked him, oh, hey, uh, what are you doing? And he, of course, he told me he was writing code. So uh, I got really interested, and he shared a Python book. I think this was learning Python. And yeah, I think I fell in love with programming at that point. I wanted to be a doctor all my life, and then I did community service at Kenyatta and realized I couldn't. So it was a very mechanical decision. I looked at what I was good at in high school, math and physics ranked high, and then computer science was one of the things which, you know, they were prerequisites for. And then, yeah, I watched the social network and I was like, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. And then I did. I was just trying to learn this PHP thing. The next language was Ruby. And I was so amazed that, you know, Ruby, it, it was so explanatory. It had its server. I started progressing. I went to Python Flask. Um, I dwelt there a bit. Between Ruby and PHP was Node.js. So when I was coming back to AT, I was like, Node.js is the thing. I remember telling some dude, Node.js. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I need to conquer my fear, which was always this Java thing. So in the last, say, 18 months, it's just been Java or Scala. My first programming language was not a matter of choice, it was a matter of circumstance. Um, that was the language I was taught in school, that was Java. So, uh, but over time, I, I taught myself other languages, like um, I goofed around with Python, with Ruby, um, with JavaScript. Um, I currently use Scala as my first language. And um, yeah, I'm looking at Alexa and, and Erlang. Uh, yeah, a lot of programming languages, but my core is Scala. My first programming language was uh, Python. Mm, it was easy to pick up. Uh, yes, it's my current programming language. I know uh, about three languages. Um, so that's Python, Go, and Scala. Um, I love Go. It's a very simple, easy to write language. Uh, easy to pick up, uh, Python too, and Scala is a really, really interesting language. Because of the school curriculum, we first did C and then C Sharp along with HTML and um, CSS. But uh, I think my first real programming language was probably Android because I did an Android development course in school. So we did a bit of an intro to Java and then Android, but no, I'm not using it anymore. I, I yeah. 
I eventually got into Python and then into data and now it's been going from Python with data to Scala with data because of AT and here we are now. I'd really like to understand containers and container orchestration. Uh, you know, there's so many buzzwords being thrown around right now. Kubernetes, Mesos, Docker. I'd really like to know those pieces of technology and get to contribute to the open source projects. There's this library, it's called OpenNMT. NMT stands for Neural Machine Translation. And basically what it does is character level translation from language to language. Um, this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Uh, just because um, democratizing machine learning skills is something I think ab about a lot and just looking at the various barriers of entry for people uh, not knowing English is a huge thing so if we think about Kenya everyone who is not conversant with English cannot take part in I don't know the AI economy so I've been thinking about slowly starting to translate content into Kiswahili, into Luya, into, you know, whatever, so that anyone who has an interest can actually get a hold of material and start learning. Fogo meat could be challenging at times. You know, you could have a book you couldn't fix for days. I still have the same spell yesterday, so, but it's just that, that feeling you have after you solve the problem. There's that fulfillment you feel like, yes, like it's worth it. You know, especially if you're building solutions people are using to change their life. So that's like the, the encouragement I get all of the time that this affects people's life directly. Hack movies? I mean, I'd see those guys scripting away and, you know, hacking NSA in seconds. So I guess it's weird though, but once in a while I'd watch something really cool and then get motivated. You know, maybe uh, watch like an Aaron Swartz, Swartz, I think that's how you say his name. Basically this guy that hacked the MIT um, journal database and um, he, he had a really cool goal which was to open content up for every I mean to everybody um, so yeah that would really motivate me it's really weird but yeah it does I'd like to be the best at what I do so just saying that I want to be a computer scientist has played a big role in me actually trying to become a good one while at it so that and also um, like with coming to AT and being around all these amazing, brilliant people, and they're very many. Um, for a long time, I'd sit in engineering meetings and listen to the discussions, and I'd be taking down notes of all the things which I didn't know, which was a lot, and I felt very intimidated. So another thing that kept me going, I think, is the fact that uh, Diana was always in that room, and she was always being like very brilliant and rocket sciencey. And I kept thinking, wow, I want to be like this girl and one day just engage people the way she does. part of the Lagos Scala community. I'm the current meetup organizer. I'm part of um, Toka Lagos, um, Wiko, Dabuja, and yeah, Dev Center Lagos. I run a community for women in machine learning and data science, which has literally just consumed my life. But yeah, I found that I really enjoy it. I like when new people come into the space and they start creating solutions that previously no one would have been working on because all our pain points are different. But yeah, I run this community. We've been in existence for like two years now and I love the progress. So just moving on, doing more. The addition I would bring to the deaf community is through women in tech. I kind of want to take this knowledge back to universities very soon and I want to do it um, like dev outreach, more like telling them what's out there in the industry and how to fill the gaps and that it's not too late to start filling the gaps. So I'm a co-organizer of the Python Nairobi group um, and I'm looking forward to um, hosting the Golang Nairobi meetup. Um, I'm really passionate about Go, especially after um, being one of the speakers in Kofakon Iceland, which was really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to just helping the community here uh, pick up Go and understand Go. The latest initiative is to try and create an engineering school uh, through AT and maybe other partners. Another thing that might be exciting if we can achieve it is to make the uh, policy holder, I mean policy makers, even the government to realize that you know, you want to put money in manufacturing, you want to put money in all these things. 
it's perfect, it's nice, but you can put money in upskilling developers. If you look at the value we create out of nothing and think about how much value you can create for, you know, like for a country by giving people the right skills to just write, to create software out of their thinking and then that software becomes so much value.